Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna show you guys how to connect this mesh Wi-Fi system by actually showing you guys the connections. I have my ethernet cables here, I have my modem here, I have my switch and my other switch here. So I'm gonna show you guys with physical connections how to connect this stuff. But before I do, I just wanna quickly explain what a mesh Wi-Fi system is. So a mesh Wi-Fi is when you get two or more devices like this, like a router and a satellite, and it could be three as well, or four and you expand your network. So when you're walking around with your Wi-Fi device, you basically connect to a single Wi-Fi, so just one, so let's just say the uh, Wi-Fi was called Land Pet Wi-Fi, and you would basically um, connect to that, and then when you walk around your place, you don't have to like switch and connect to the other one, you're like, hey, I'm closer to this guy, should I switch, no. Like Mesh Wi-Fi does everything for you. Everything's automatic. You connect to a single network, it does everything for you. Walk around, uh, it handles everything for you. Okay, so let's get to the connection. So to keep this very consistent with how I did in my other videos, there are three basic options with this, with, with these two that you can do. So just because this is a Mesh Wi-Fi system doesn't actually mean you need to use more than one. You could just use the router. Important to note, you need at least one router. Uh, router is essential, you need at least one. Uh, this is a satellite, a satellite without a router is basically pointless. Okay, so now let's talk about the modem. So this is my modem and my modem is just a modem. It is not a modem router combo. If this was a modem router combo, I would disable the router portion of my modem or put it in bridge mode, which basically disables it. So why, why are you doing that, right? Well, the reason is because if you don't do that, you're actually gonna create two separate networks. This is not gonna expand your, this router's network because every router has its own network address translation. It does its own routing. It has its own tables and everything. And so when you connect more than one router, it basically uh, creates two different networks uh, and with two different brands uh, of router, I should say. So in that case, you basically want to disable it. If you have an older router and you're like, hey, can I still use this as Ethernet ports and stuff like that? I would personally advise against that. If you do need Ethernet ports, I would just basically buy an unmanaged switch like this one, for instance, and you get like an A port switch. They're fairly inexpensive. I'll put links in the description below. But essentially, I would rather get a switch um, than use an old router because I feel like that's just gonna complicate things. Okay, so now that we've basically decided to use a single router, this is what you need to do. Just because you have a mesh Wi-Fi system, and this is option one, this is the ones that I refer to as option one, just because you have a mesh Wi-Fi system doesn't actually mean you need to use more than one. So as long as you have a single router. Okay, so basically here is my router and here is my modem. So my modem actually has two Ethernet ports and each Ethernet port has its own IP address. But my second one is not in use because I would actually have to call my ISP and request one and pay another monthly fee for that. So, which I don't want to do, obviously, and that's the whole point of getting routers is because you can take one and exp expand it to multiple devices. You don't need uh, more than one, at least most people don't. Okay, so basically, um, typically the top one is the one that's enabled, the bottom one is usually disabled. Um, that's typically the case. So what I do is, obviously this is hooked up to my coaxial. This would work just fine if you had a DSL or anything else. Um, so pretty much, you know, hook up the power, hook up the coax for this one. If you have DSL, you know, hook up the phone line or whatever. Um, so essentially, this is the part where we start. So we go from the Ethernet port, and remember the router of this should be disabled, to the dedicated Ethernet port of the Orbi, so which is the yellow port. And the other ports, well, the Orbi actually, this one specifically supports up to two gigabits per second. So if you did get that one, you would have to use both of these. Um, then you would have two other ports that were open. But in my case, because my internet is uh, 400 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload, I only need one ethernet port. So I have three open ports that I can use. Okay, well, what do you do with the ports, right? 
Well, you can do a number of things. Uh, if I have a computer and I want to hook up my computer, I can basically just pick any one of the three ports. It does not matter. The router will handle that for you. And then I plug this into my computer. If I have another device and I basically want to connect something else, well, what do I do, right? Well, what I could do is basically hook up another Ethernet port and hook it up to my second device. And it's like, okay, well, what if I have more than three devices? Well, what you could do is get an unmanaged switch. And the cool thing is you can get any brand you want. Unlike this, where like if I needed another satellite, I got this RB, and then if I need another one, I can't just get like an S Wi Fi or an Eero, and it's not going to work that way. It's going to create another network. I have to get a Netgear Orbi to expand this existing network. With a switch, it does not matter. I have a D link here, I have a TP link here, I have another TP link. It, it does not matter which one. Uh, what brand it is so as long as it's unmanaged switch what you want to look for and I'll, I'll I have the link in the description below but what you want to look for is an unmanaged switch that can at least do gigabit speeds obviously if you need more than that then you know take a look at that but uh, I'm looking for gigabit speeds okay so what I do is like what I can do is like okay well I need more ports right well what do I do well I hook up this to an open port it does not matter which one to any one of the ports I want it does not matter which one I use so when I hook it up to this one and if I wanted to hook it up to this one I'll hook it up to this one it does not matter the switch detects it it knows which one is the source of the internet the router is pretty much doing all that for you um, and then now if this is an eight port switch I have seven usable ports so you always have to subtract one because your network is going to require a port. So if you have an 8-port switch, you only have 7 other devices you can connect. If you have a 24-port switch, you only need, uh, your usable ones are 23 of them, obviously, because one's required for the network. So when you hook up this switch to this guy, now you have 7 other ports that you can use. Now, can you still use these? Yes, I can leave these plugged in. does not matter. Uh, if I need more ports, now I basically could connect stuff here it does not matter which port I use at all and then I basically just hook this up to my Xbox or whatever device that I need an Ethernet for and then I'm good to go so that's basically option number one so option number two is when you hook this up wirelessly to this now notice I didn't disconnect everything I could have disconnected everything but option number two is basically option number one with an extra satellite. That's all option number two is. And with this one, you go to another room or two rooms away. It can't be too close to this and it can't be too far. You have to find that sweet spot. And if you don't, the app will tell you like, hey, it's too far, it's not good, or find another placement and stuff. So you go a room or two rooms away or whatever, and you hook this up, you hook up the power, and it wirelessly connects to this. You do have to add it in the app, in the Orbi app. You do have to say add a satellite, but basically it detects it, and it automatically wirelessly connects to this. So now there's a wireless connection between these, and you can expand your network wirelessly. So now if I have my device, and I'm in this room, I'm walking here, I have a good strong connection, good strong speeds, and then when I go to the other room, it automatically connects to this one. I don't have to do anything on my device at all. It will automatically detect, hey, you're closer to this one, connect to me. And then my internet just continues there, or my network continues, I should say. Okay, so now if you guys are wondering, okay, well, what if I want to expand my network here? Can I... If I wirelessly connect this stuff, can I use the Ethernet ports on this router, on the satellite, not router, on the satellite? And the answer is yes. And what is a satellite? It's basically an extender or an access point. They just call it a satellite, but that's basically what it is. So the answer is yes, you can use both of these Ethernet ports to connect devices. So, you know, if I connect this and I have the Xbox in the other room, as an example, I could just, these are wirelessly connected, I can plug that in and then my Xbox will have 
internet access or network access, I should say. And if I need more ports, what I could do is I could basically get another switch. So in this case, I can basically get another switch here. And let's just, let's take out one or two cables just so I have something usable. Um, you can leave this stuff plugged in and usable. I'm just taking it off for the demo. But if you wanted more ports on the other side, you can connect this guy here. Any one of the ports you want does not matter. It, it's all automatic. And then you connect this one, and then now you can connect this to the Xbox, and now you have 23 other usable ports. Again, it's 24 minus one because one's reserved. And now anything that connects to this automatically connects to your network. And if you need more ports, then you could just hook up something else here and basically go. Okay, got two more Ethernet cables. So basically, if I wanted to hook up something else, I could just plug it into any port that I want, does not matter, and then I could hook it up to some other device, and that's totally fine. And keep in mind, you can still use this other port. You, you don't have to use this. You can also just use it straight from here as well. So, and this handles gigabit, and it does not matter if you have a D-Link connected to this guy and stuff connected to that guy, and you have a TP-Link connected to this guy and stuff. So because these are wirelessly talking to each other, you're gonna get speeds that are going to work. Uh, your, your internet's gonna work, basically. Now, it's always recommended for there to be a connection between these two, and that's when we get into option five. But with the Orbi speeds, at least with my internet speeds, it's actually been getting really good speeds even over wireless, which is really good. Okay, so now we're getting into option number five, which is wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul. And if you're wondering, well, why'd you skip options three and four? Well, options three and four and all my other videos with the Eero 6, the Eero Pro 6, and the Nest Wi-Fi, I'm referring to two routers. Because I have a router and a satellite, I to keep it consistent, I'm gonna skip options three and four, and I'm just gonna go straight to option five, which is a router and a satellite that are hooked up to each other via ethernet. So you basically get an ethernet cable, you either go from here, uh, from the router directly to the satellite directly. This basically, now your internet, now your network is being transferred over ethernet, not wireless, which is always better than wireless. Um, well, it's more consistent with wireless. With slower internet speeds, it, I guess it didn't really matter, but it's, it's always a good thing to go with Ethernet if you have the option, especially if you have faster internet speeds. So, and if you're wondering, okay, well, do I have to go from the router? Can I go through the switch? Absolutely, you can go through a switch, so as long as your switch is hooked up to your router. So because I have my red cable that goes here, a red head portion of it, I should say, I can pick any one of these ports, does not matter, and then I can go straight to my satellite same exact thing, no difference. And if you're wondering, okay, well, can I go from my switch to my other switch then to my satellite? Yes, you can do that too. So you can um, connect this guy, where's the port? And then, you know, from, from one of these guys would have to connect to your satellite. Or it's, it's already connected, so yeah, so you're good. So yeah, so you could go from a router to a switch to another switch to the satellite. You can go directly from here to here. The other question that I get is, can I, so this is basically all the options that you have. So hopefully all of that makes sense. Um, and the more satellites you add and the more, you know, the farther away you get, and if they're wireless, the, the slower the internet speeds will become. But if you, if you always have Ethernet between them, you're going to have consistently fast speed. So you do want to have Ethernet if possible. So you do want to go for option number five. So a question that I get is, hey, can I hook up my modem to a switch and then from the switch go to the router? And the answer is no. The router always has to go to the modem first. That, is, that needs to happen. And then once the router is directly connected to the modem, then from there, you can pretty much expand any way you want. Um, you are limited to 253 usable 
devices. So if you keep getting these 24 ports and then you pass 253 devices, it's not going to work unless you go and start changing some settings around like subnet mask and all that other stuff. But in most cases, 253 devices are is more than enough for most people. And the reason why it's 253 is because it's actually 256, uh, but then you have the first number and the last number are reserved. So dot zero is reserved and the last one dot 255 is reserved. And then dot one is usually uh, reserved for the gateway router. So that's why you, you get 253 usable ports. Anyways, but most people don't need that many. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment sections below. Thank you guys for watching and thank you to all my current subscribers.